Right, now let's look at page eight and nine. As you can see, we've got a double page layout spread and I've got two very large photo or document pages on the sides. And these take really big photo mats. If I bring these out and these photo mats are measuring uh, 10 inches by 10 inches so really big photo mats great for putting lots of pictures on putting some of your cutter parts to put some some journaling on there as well so again you could have your photos landscape or portrait doesn't really matter but we've got one of those inside each of these very large pockets the nice thing about the large pockets as well is they are just perfect for putting any memorabilia documentation or anything you want to keep this one I've decorated slightly differently I've matted and layered a couple of the photographs put some of the little strips across just to add a little bit of interest there so both done slightly differently this one's rounded edges the other one wasn't but this is where you can go to town and have fun so let me show you how we created these huge document pages inside this album so pop that to one side move my ruler out the way so we need to turn the page first to start with okay so we're going to turn the page to start and what I'm going to do is so let me just so this is the back this is the back side of this page this is going to be the inside of the pocket so to not complicate things I think to start with I'm going to get my trimmer and I'm going to cut two pieces of the turquoise card one and a half inches by eleven and a half inches so one and a half inches I'm going to need two of those and I think by doing this you might just get what I'm getting at with the concept and then these need to be 11 and a half inches long so let's uh, move that around to 11 and a half inches so that's one and two okay so that's that done okay so this is going to be the inside of the pocket so this is where one of these strips is going to be stuck so let's stick that down to start with so we're just going directly down onto the page Okay, let's go right up to the edge, slide that along, you might just have to move it, there we go, in fact I quite like that, that's just got that little tiny border all the way around, so that's perfect. Right, so that is the base page, this is going to then, the next page is going to be the top page, this is going to be the top page so this is going to be our base page so we do the same again on this side and just lay that in situ and it's quite good if you're using the wet glue because it gives you that little bit of wiggle room okay so that is the inside Two pieces these this is going to be our top page so this is where you're going to need your pencil okay so you've got your pencil and your ruler and I want you to mark in one inch on both sides so I'm going to go in one inch there And that is going to be stuck down to there. So actually it doesn't matter how far it comes in. So let's go. 
and then because the, these pages are just over 11 and a half long you need to bring it in one inch so I'm just going to move my ruler to 12 and come in one again that doesn't matter about making a mark it's going to be on the inside of the pocket okay so that is my mark then what I'm going to do is bring my paper trimmer in and I'm going to pick up the two pages if you don't feel confident to do the two together do one at a time but you can do two together and I'm going to slide it into my trimmer so it's going to then hit the one inch mark let me just double check that yeah so I'm going to slide that in and it's just going to come on to the one inch mark I'm just making sure that's all lined up pop my blade down so you're going to find your pencil mark slide your blade in where your pencil mark is and push down and then you're going to go all the way to the top till you get to the next pencil mark and I'm just trying to find my pencil mark excuse my head which is about there let me just double check just a little bit more that's my pencil mark so you've got this going on so you've come one inch from the top one inch to the bottom and you've got this so now you can slide it away from your paper trimmer go in with your scissors you can do two together again and we're going to cut a diagonal from the point of the paper the point of the paper to that central paper there okay so just gently with your scissors so you've got that configuration going on okay and we're going to do exactly the same on the other side so from the point that bit there okay that's done so now when I lay these over you can already see it happening here but we've got two of these you can see how I came across my two big pockets now how we stick these pockets is important because we need to get in right where all these spines are and this is where your fine nozzle glue which I seem to have mislaid is rolled over here under my die cutting machine so there you go your fine nozzle glue comes in very very handy so what I do is I'm going round each of the spines or spirals it might seem quite fiddly it's not but it's well worth doing because if you want these big document pockets to hold lots of documents and memorabilia you know you could be doing this as a family heirloom and you want it to hold um, birth certificates or anything like that you want this to be strong you don't want this falling apart do you so so and I'm just going in and out round the spirals okay so that's round the spirals and then this is the bit that's going to flap over so I'm then going all the way along with my fine nib again because I want to optimise the size of this pocket and again with the top doesn't matter how straight your lines are okay and then you're going to get this one and you're going to fold that back just lining it all up so it all sticks together and just take your time with your finger and go in and pressing all that down just making sure you're going in don't worry if parts of your glue 
seep out as I say these do this glue does dry clear and I'm sure one you're using does the same okay so that now has created your pocket on that side so we're going to do exactly the same on this side so we're going to flip back the top part and go along in between all the spirals your thin nozzle is perfect for this and I, as I said before I would recommend getting one they're really good for you know sticking down your die cut little pieces on your projects as well okay but these albums as well they're a great way of using you know if you've got lots of um, leftover scrapbook paper in your craft room and if you only need a couple of sheets to match for each page so it doesn't matter if each page is different colorways you don't have to do it all matchy matchy so um you know you can have quite a bit of fun with this so it's just getting hold of the albums that you can readily get hold of now i've done it this time i've gone on the base but that should be all right because i've got my thin nozzle okay and because I'm using tacky glue, I know it's going to have a good adhesion. So I'm quite happy with that. So now I get the second part. Just make sure my holes on the spine are all level. And this is all level with this bit here. And again, I'm just going to go in with my tool. I'm pressing down everything's level and just taking your time and you're going to go in with my finger because so all that's doing is just dispersing all that glue so that's making that pocket nice and sturdy because you've got that double layer and if you've got a piece seeping out to wipe that away so that is our two large pockets done so now let's decorate on the top of this so to decorate this i'm going to get my paper trimmer and you know this lovely pattern paper we used at the beginning we're going to use some of this so i'm going to trim it down to 10 inches and then i'm going to cut four strips at a quarter of an inch each I know it might not seem a lot but it's going to give a wonderful effect to your page so you're going to need no I need six we need six of these so that's two three four five and six okay so that's six of those while i've got my paper trimmer out i picked out some of my card pieces and i like the sentiment on this i'm going to trim this down and this is the thing with these cutter parts even though they're four inches by six inches you can trim them down and don't be afraid to trim them down so I'm going to trim down so I want this to be four inches high I want to be four inches high and I'm just thinking how wide I needed this one let me just measure the one on my page three and a half right and I need that to be three and a half so I need to take a little bit off each side so as I say don't be afraid to trim these down that's three and a half that's fine let me just double check that measurement that's it it's not very straight that's it okay so another thing I'm going to do is going to round the corners on here So 
so that's like that I've got some more paper here and I'm going to make myself a couple of more um, cut aparts if you like and this is what I was saying if you haven't got any cut aparts you can make your own so that's four inches by three inches so I've got four by three here and if I round the edges on this one that's one and then I'm going to use the opposite side to this so I'm going to go four that's fine three and I'm going to round the corners on this so I've got that as well I've got another couple of cutter parts on here I know these have got rounded edges but I'm doing them the exact same as my corner rounder so everything all matches in nicely Oh, my corner round is getting full again. Just empty that out. I just think this colour is beautiful. It's definitely my Dawn's Inspirations colour, isn't it? And then I've got some photo mats here. Well, these aren't photo mats. These are in place of photographs, OK? Because I'm putting the photographs straight in, but I just wanted to show you where they're going to be. So one I've measured as four inches by five and a half. And then I've got two here that are six by four. So these are photographs in my little world at the moment. So I haven't decided what photographs are going on here. Okay, so I've got two of those. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start assembling our page. Because I want to show you a really quick and easy way to compose a page. Just from bits like this. And this is it. This is what I'm saying. Any bits of scrapbooking paper you've got in your crafty stash you can just make up really quick pages like this so I need to find a middle point of my page so best rule of thumb let's count so I'm just counting in on my um, spirals so I'm just going in right so that is my middle point all right, so I'm wondering what I'm going to, that's my middle point too, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stick a piece of paper there because I know that is now my middle point. Because I want everything veering off this, but we need to ink edges. And because I'm using that lovely aqua colour, we're going to go in with... Peacock feathers, what else could you use? And I am going to ink all the edges of this because this layer is very simple and against the black, the peacock feathers is really going to stand out. So as I'm doing it, I'm going to lay them out so you can see where they're going to go. I mean, this card here with the note, perfect for your journaling don't have to worry about any hidden journaling because you've got it there absolutely perfect this one I'm going to bring down the bottom here my little homemade cut apart see if you haven't got one that matches the right size make your own easily done and then this is going to be a photograph so I'm not going to ink that because that's going to be a photograph and then we're going to pop this one here I hope for those of you that don't normally ink your edges that by seeing how quick and easy it can be that you might start giving it a go because it, it does it is nice sometimes I do sometimes I don't it depends how I feel now this one is going to be my photo that is smaller this is the five and a half inch by four then I'm going to put a 6x4 up there and then I'm going to again ink my homemade cut apart and that's going to go there so 
we can start sticking down. So to put these down, I'm going to lay, I had that there, didn't I? So I'm going to lay that there. Well, actually, I'm going to leave that where it was. And I'm going to lay one of my strips as a guide. This is a guide. Okay, so I know I get everything level. Okay, and then we can just start sticking down. So, one photograph. I'm not going right up to the line because I want that bit of black just showing because I think it looks nice. You've got that black border. It's like you've done a matte and layer, but you haven't. Perfect. I'm going to put this one next to it. And excuse my head if it's in the way. And can you see I'm just putting my little bit of a gap again. And I've got nice cutter parts with words. So bring them in. This one is from the um, Poetic Roses. So again, even if, though that's a different colour, by inking the edge the same colour as the rest, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Let's just get this lined up. So that now should be... I'm going to bring that down just to little bit excuse my head if it's in the way I do apologize that's good happy there I'm going to use my guide again to bring there and actually if I do that make sure my pages are square and it is just a matter of lining them up. Now, if you don't feel confident doing it how I do, because I do eyeball a lot, which is just judging it, um, you could just draw, draw some pencil lines and rub them out afterwards. Feel free to do that. There's no right or wrong. You find the method that you find the easiest to do. That is what it's all about. Hopefully I'm giving you some inspiration and the confidence to give it a go. Because I must say, I think these spiral albums do get overlooked. I know as a scrapbooker, I have overlooked them in the past because I thought, well, they're not proper scrapbook albums. That's not how I scrapbook. I scrapbook with page protectors. But hopefully you've seen that you can scrapbook with them very easily. This is a great way to get the kids involved as well and for them to document things like their holidays and projects at school and school trips and things like that. Now I'm just going to stand up and have a look at it so I can see by eyeball. Oh, that's stuck to my hand. If that's straight. See, I can always eyeball and tell you that needs to come down just a little bit. that away and then what I'm going to do with these strips now is we're going to use these as like a frame little borders so I'm going to bring in my fine pen again or fine glue so what I'm going to do is these are just going to add that little frame round here which makes a nice little addition. I thought there was two there. I was going to say, I thought I'd lost one on the floor then. I hadn't. So, can you see how just overlapping them just makes it, it just finishes it off, I think, personally. So, again, with my fine nib. See, you need a fine nib glue in your life. If you haven't got one, pick one up. They're not expensive and you can fill them with the glue of your choice, which is 
absolutely perfect. So. And with these, it doesn't matter because I know we've cut the strips. It doesn't matter which way around the words and everything are because it's that fine. You can't see it. That's the other good thing. off there and if you do get a bit where you don't want a bit just rub it with your hands perfect I'm just going to twizzle this round so I can reach the top ones there without you seeing my head in the way you can see how quickly this can come together I do hope you enjoy the fact it's real time. Feedback I've had in the past is the fact that people like it in real time because they can craft with me and they feel like I'm in the room with them. Probably because I never stop talking, but there we go. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel as yet, please do because there's always things coming up from techniques to freebie scrapbook layouts to mini book albums there's always something going on I've been on YouTube for several years now so don't forget to look at my back catalogue of videos as well because there's always something that you might have missed because you haven't joined me until later on it might just float your boat and I know my projects when I was first filming I didn't have a very good camera but they're still lovely and they're still projects I enjoy making today and I think I'm going to be refilming some of them so they look a bit clearer for you so that just that crossover that way and the last one on this side so And by the time we've done all this, the pockets of our actual, or our document pockets of these pages will be dry as well, which is super great. So that is all those done. And isn't that lovely, just having that, the thin strips there, just bordering that, and with the piece of turquoise on the edges, I just think it looks so elegant. Now your photo mats are very easy to do. We just turn the page and we take out two pages. Let's take two pages out from there. Bring the paper trimmer in. And we're going to cut them both at 10 inches. So it's going to be 10 inch square but if you didn't want to put photo mats and you wanted to keep the pockets as purely um, documents that's fine as well no problem with that whatsoever and then corner around those or you can't your choice I'm going to corner around all four of these this time and again before you start loading them with your photographs please please do check they fit in your pockets because that is the most important thing so let's check that they fit inside here which I'm sure they will just if the glue is still a little bit wet but that's fine so that fits inside there and I'm going to have that partly poking out I just love that detail there on the edge and the colour is my colour to a T love it love it love it love it so pop that one in there so that is your page eight nine all complete so if I bring in the finished one 
it's got the photographs in you can see once you add your photographs how different it looks and then you can just decorate your photo mats I've done some here where I've matted and layered onto the aqua I've just used strips of um, just scraps that I've got left some of the cutter parts again you know just use what you've got that is the main thing so I've done that on that one and then to show you another way to do it on this one I've used some of the card that I had left just to colour that theme all the way through these are bits that actually had stuck in the album that were from the catamaran uh, boat trip we went on so there's lots of spaces for journaling and I've just stuck that out the leaflet from the catamaran as well but just by adding just your cardstock just strips just scraps just to decorate it up absolutely perfect so that can go in there and then obviously any other memorabilia you've got so that is those pages I hope you've enjoyed that and if I come up with any more pages I'll add them to it as well